Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome on in to the Josh Reese Show. We are coming to you here live from Toyota Center, recapping and covering the Rockets' Game 5 win over the Oklahoma City Thunder, 105-99. to The Rockets sent the Thunder packing in Game 5 and avoided going back to the Chesapeake Arena in Oklahoma City. And uh, it was in doubt for a little while. Luckily, like all the games before, the Rockets ended up uh, coming out on top thanks to uh, some um, Russell Westbrook on the benchness. I don't know if that's really a word, but it probably should be. And uh, I imagine it's something the Thunder are going to address um, going forward for next season. Try to find someone that can... Um, supplant Wesley Westbrook's minutes for the seven minutes he is on the bench. Seriously, Westbrook was on the bench for seven minutes, and the Rockets beat them because of that, pretty much. In the seven minutes that Westbrook was on the bench, the Rockets outscored him, I want to say, and I'm fairly certain I'm close to this number, the Rockets outscored the Thunder 27-9 to while Westbrook was on the bench. That's, that's pretty damn good. Um, overall, Westbrook was, what was Westbrook? He was a plus 12, but guys off the bench, Abrinas, minus 24, Enos Cantor, only played three minutes. Really? Really? Billy Donovan? Enos Cantor is supposed to be your best scorer off the bench. You played three minutes. Uh, Jeremy Grant was a negative 24. It was, it's just insane how, how awful the Thunder are at scoring when Russell Westbrook leaves. And it was, I mean, you, you can't you can't skirt it. That's the only reason the Rockets are walking out of this series. Had the Thunder had one more capable bench player, this is a tied series, maybe the Thunder are leading this series, maybe the Thunder have already won this series. So that's something very dangerous for the Rockets. While they had, did win this series four to one, all these games were decided by a coin flip at the end, pretty much. And uh, game five was no different. Uh, so we'll get into kind of what happened uh, in the in the game tonight. And uh, it, was, it was brutal for the Rockets in the first quarter. I want to say they ended up having six turnovers in the first alone. And the Rockets do lead the NBA in the playoffs in first quarter turnovers. Scratch that. The Rockets are fourth most in the NBA in first quarter turnovers. But still, first most, fourth most, those are still awful numbers. And uh, that has a large part to do why the Rockets struggle so much out of the gate. And it was, it was the same way against the Thunder on Tuesday night. They only scored 16 points. Luckily, they were able to hold the Thunder to 22 points, but there was at one point during the during the first quarter where you thought this was going to be, you know, Thunder were going to be up like 33 points, or they were going to have like a 33-point score at the end of the first. But luckily, the Rockets ended up buckling down and uh, holding the Thunder um, to 22. The Rockets came out in the second quarter. That bench unit really carried them. Lou Williams did a fantastic job. Eric Gordon was very good. Nene, of course, was good. They ended up scoring 35, and they took the lead into the um, into halftime. But the Rockets came out of halftime. They struggled, and they had to survive. Yeah, they had to survive a Russell Westbrook. I want to say 22, 20 point quarter. It was fairly gnarly. Russell Westbrook was draining threes all over the place. 30 foot threes were well within Russell Westbrook's range tonight, and. Um, he was damn near unstoppable in the third. And I, I believe at one point he even yelled that to Patrick Beverly, um, who had a nice little comeback for him after the game. Uh, you can listen to that on NBA TV, I would imagine. Um, but like in all the games except the first game, Russell Westbrook started off in the fourth quarter on the bench, and that's where the Rockets made the run. When Russell West, when the Rockets, when Russell Westbrook came back into the game, the Thunder were trailing. I'm sure that is very, very maddening for Westbrook on the bench, just sitting there. 
I can't come in yet because I'm so damn tired. But Jesus, these guys are giving me nothing. It's got to be a very help, helpless, helpless experience. Um, I tweeted a video because uh, I just recently watched um, The Water Boy, and uh, this was where the coach was talking to Adam Sandler, uh, Bobby Boucher, and uh, he's he's talking to his whole team. And he's going, guys. Bobby can't do it all himself. Someone needs to step up. We need more from all you guys. Whatever, something like that. Uh, the whole team leaves. And he looks at Bobby and he goes, Bobby, these guys suck. You have to do it all yourself. And uh, I imagine that was a, a similar speech uh, towards Russell Westbrook tonight, who did damn near everything for the Thunder, even ended up taking 34 shots, 18 threes just to get him back into the game, and uh, he was not able to do it. R Russ Book's line finishes 47, 11, and 9. He does not finish the Rockets series with a triple-double, which I guess is a small miracle in itself. Silver lining. Um, so, may hey, maybe the Rockets did play great defense. They held Russell Westbrook without a triple-double. So, James Harden, while he had 34 points, he was fairly inefficient. Thank God for the free throws, because if not, this would have been a fairly rough game. Harden finished 16-17 from the line, but overall in the night, he was 8 for 25, 2 for 13 from 3. This was not one of the better games from James Harden. Luckily... He got a good night from Lou Williams, who had 22, and then Beverly also poured in 15 points and had an insane, insane five offensive rebounds. How is a guy that is 6'1", just a, a, a smidge taller than me, able to go up against all these massive, ginormous NBA players and snag down offensive boards? I don't know how he does it. I don't know how guys can't find him in the lane, but they don't. He grabs a rebound, he kicks it out for a three, or he puts it up himself. Patrick Beverly, you're the real MVP. He's probably not. But he had an amazing uh, series, really good series against the Oklahoma City Thunder. And um, that matchup between him and Russell Westbrook, I can't remember who tweeted it after the game, um, but it's so fitting uh, that he hopes that Westbrook and Beverly continue this feud forever and that one day, even when they are both in a nursing home, both guys are trying to pull out each other's IVs. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And and these guys, I mean, <laughs> very fun to watch. Westbrook might have had 47 points, whatever he had tonight, but it took him a shit ton of shots to get it. And uh, I believe that was Patrick Beverly's uh, message after the game. Not word for word, but the gist. Um, so that's pretty much all what happened during the game today. I know I just summarized it. Um, it's getting late here. <sighs> but there is some things to be a little bit concerning about, and that is the first quarter starts and the Rockets starters just having an overall bad shooting. Um, Ryan Anderson kind of addressed that a little bit after the game and mentioned that the, the shooting struggles were not because the Rockets are struggling from, sh struggling from three, the shooting struggles are more due to um, the Thunder's game plan at taking the Rockets away from the three-point shot. And uh, I was doing a little bit of research about this after, uh, before the game, and that premise is not too far off from what Ryan Anderson was saying. Um, the research that I saw was that the Rockets are, having, are, are doing more drives per game, uh, about nine more drives a game than they did all season, during this series with the Thunder. So the Thunder's pretty much overall message in this series was, hey, twos are less important than threes, so we'll let you hit as many twos as you want as long as you don't hit 15 threes a game. And the Rockets did not. Tonight, in, on Tuesday in Game 5, the Rockets hit th six threes, which I believe, if my math and my research is correct, is only the second time... During the playoffs and the regular season that the Rockets, well, during this year, that the Rockets have lost a game or won a game that they have shot 
or made less than 10 threes. So uh, put that pipe, put that in your pipe and smoke it then. Um, during this series, you saw the Rockets make 10, 11, I think that was just 10, 11 threes. Um, and then in game five, six. And yet they were still able to win. Good defense by the Houston Rockets in clutch situations and um, and good foul drawing ability if that's such a thing, which it is. James Harden does an amazing job at that. Um, but you do worry about that continuing in the next series. Um, the Rockets are going to face a much tougher task, be it the Memphis Grizzlies or the San Antonio Spurs. And we'll break down that series whenever it becomes official. But just on the face of it, the Grizzlies have a lot more weapons than the than the Thunder had, and the San Antonio Spurs have a, certainly a lot more weapons than the Grizzlies and the Thunder have probably combined. Um, so, game one will start on Monday. We're not sure who the Rockets are going to face yet. They're either going to go to San Antonio for game one, or they're going to stay here and face the Memphis Grizzlies in game one. But till then, I will see y'all guys next time. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, feel free to share, and feel free to subscribe to this channel. It would be very much appreciated. Guys, I am getting the hell out of here, and we will see you next time, sometime in the future. Till then, I'll catch y'all guys later.